Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 Beta with Zebu Nation. We are back, of course, with Nashville SC. Now, it's uh, it's been a few games. I've moved things ahead a little bit, not too far. We're not quite to the mid-season point yet, but I've moved ahead enough, played enough games to sort of get a feeling of the beta, have some opinions on some things, and, and see how it's working out. And I think it's working out okay. But we'll take a look at the beta as a whole uh, a little later. For now, let's take a look at Nashville and see how we're doing. And we're actually doing very well. You can see here, after 13 games, we are in third place. That's outstanding. We are you know, completely destroying the board's expectations up here. You can see here, 100% board confidence. They are loving life right now and uh you know we're definitely gonna reap some rewards from that we you know anytime you get this kind of board confidence you want to take advantage of it especially with nashville we got a lot of things we need to build and uh, you know we got to build a whole program here right now we're winning on the field we got to win off the field at some point but uh you know that's for maybe later episodes right now let's focus on the team and the form and our form is outstanding. We got seven wins, two draws, four losses, total of 23 points, a plus 12 goal differential. We're crushing people, or at least we've had a few good games where we've crushed a few people. We'll look at that in a minute. But we're only one point behind New England, who's a very strong team this year, and surprisingly, Cincinnati uh, up top at 28 points. Now, they've played two more games. They've got 15 games under their belt. But still, there, I'm noticing a little trend with the top of the Eastern Conference. You look at this, we got a lot of expansion teams up here. Cincinnati, Nashville, and you can kind of consider Orlando City an uh, expansion team. They were, I think, 2014, 2015, something like that, so not too long ago. Atlanta United, even Inter-Miami is 8th in the conference. And then you look at the bottom of the conference, D.C., New York City, Columbus, New York Red Bull, and Toronto. The old guard is having some problems in the 2020 season, uh, you know, and that's kind of a thing that MLS is is bothered with right now. You know, I, I watch some of the YouTube shows and listen to podcasts and stuff like that. There are people who are definitely worried about the old guard in MLS. You know, they got funky stadiums, old stadiums, maybe some fan bases that aren't too... Uh, you know, maybe they're jaded, you might say, or, you know, they're just not, they're not as, as excited about MLS as a lot of these new fan bases are, like Cincinnati, you know, marching through the streets, Nashville, I'm sure Nashville's going to be huge, you know, it's a party town, they love events there in Nashville, so they're going to fill up that stadium, even though here in, you know, in uh, Football Manager, they're not quite filling up the stadium, we'll look at that in a second. But a lot of these newer clubs, I mean, obviously Atlanta United pulling 60,000 people into a brand new domed stadium. It's hard for other teams like Columbus to compete with that. And that's why Columbus had to go through that huge fight to save the crew and, you know, get a new stadium built. You know, the other teams are going to have to follow suit. DC United followed suit. They got a new stadium and that gave them a big boost. So I think that's going to be the plan going forward for a lot of these old guard teams. New stadium, you know, big players try to find ways to reinvigorate the fan base so that they can compete with these young upstarts that are coming into the league. So let's look at the uh, supporter shield overall. We're fifth in the supporter shield, which is amazing. Cincinnati up top, FC Dallas, one of the older teams there. They're, you know, they're still holding on. They could use a new stadium, maybe you know, a more centrally located stadium perhaps. But anyway, they got 26 points on the season, eight wins, two draws, only three losses. So they're, they're the team that you know, they're looking pretty good right now. LA Galaxy, only one loss on the season, five draws is kind of holding them back right now. And they've also only played 13 games, same with FC Dallas. So I think Cincinnati's lead is a little bit uh, shaky right now since they've got two games in hand. But it's an interesting beginning of the season, kind of uh, topsy-turvy here. 
Um, but as far as we're concerned, we're on a run. You know, we're looking outstanding. So the, the first half of the season, or the first half of this half, the first quarter, <laughs> I think that's how mathematics works. Anyway, um, we were very inconsistent. We lost to Portland 2-0, then we beat Columbus 3-0, and we lost to Colorado 4-1. Real Salt Lake 1-0, then a draw with FC Dallas. Toronto 1-0, that was a big win for us. And then we come back, lose to LAFC. Um, you know, I think this was when we lost late. Yeah, own goal from John Ward, 90 plus 4 minutes. I've, no I've been noticing a lot of own goals in FM20. Maybe it's, it's just a beta thing. I think the FM19 beta, we saw a lot of own goals too. But uniquely, let's take a look at these goals so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I've noticed a lot of own goals that are bouncing off the back of the goalkeeper and going in. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I have definitely noticed it. At least, at least two or three own goals in this MLS season. So here's Latif. Getting a big steal at midfield, taking it in on our young goalkeeper, Ward. You know, the rookie's playing well. He's playing very well right now. Now, right there, you can see that wasn't a great save, but that's one-on-one -on -one with Latif Blessing. It's hard for anybody to put that, you know, stop that. Here's Dom Dwyer, guy we picked up. He's playing outstanding. He's got eight goals on the season, and he's been doing a lot of that, running forward, getting under passes. And then here's the own goal. Look at this, 93 minutes. Just about stoppage time over, off the post, off the keeper, and in. I've seen at least two or three of those. So I don't know if you're experiencing that, but I've experienced a couple of those, a couple of ones where the, uh, the defenders just turn around, shoot the ball into the back of their own net while the goalkeeper's not particularly paying attention. Um, you know, that's something that, FM19 did a, a lot of, but I've seen it in FM20 as well, so that's not great. But after that game, we figured some things out. And we're currently on a six-game unbeaten streak. Started out with 1-0 versus DC United. And we did two things. We changed our form. We went back to the 4-4-2, and it's been fairly dominant. And then we went out and we got some lone players, something I don't normally do. So let's see if those guys actually show up in the transfer history or not. Uh, let's see. Do the lone players show up? They do. So look at that. We got three guys from Man City. You know, why not? Three young players from Man City. And uh, one from Tottenham. Oh, one of these guys, one of these guys did not show up. I think this Ian Carlo Proveda did not show up for some reason. I'm not sure why. He just didn't want to come. But anyway, we didn't need him. So we got Jack Rolls from Tottenham, 21 year old. Cypriot from Cyprus. He's pretty good. Midfielder. We're playing him as you know, Mazala, roaming playmaker kind of guy. And actually, I think we're also playing him out on the right wing. You know, so these guys are versatile. They can play a lot of different places. He's got great finishing for a winger. You know, so we can you know, get some scoring from out there. He's got decent physicals, very good mentals. And he's really just given us a boost. All three of these lone players have given us a huge boost, especially in the midfield and particularly on defense with Taylor, Taylor Harwood Bellis. Outstanding young prospect, only 18 years old, four and a half stars, so he's an outstanding player for MLS. He's really good. And, uh, you know, we managed to get these guys through an interesting new way. Let's see, Tommy Doyle, another 18 year old, another midfielder, another guy that we're playing, you know, Mazala, roaming playmaker, also out on the wing. He's got great corners, great crossing, you know, he's very good technically passing, penalty taking, that kind of stuff. Just another great player, only valued at 1.1 million. Now, none of these guys want to come here permanently, but we'll take them for one season on loan and, you know, they're they're performing very, very well. And the way we got them, I don't know if they can see their contract. 
Yeah, so we started paying some monthly fees. Like they wanted some they wanted some extraordinary wages. And the board would only let us pay like 30% of their wages. That's the most the board would let us pay. So we started we added on some monthly fees and Man City was fine with it. They're like, "Okay, yeah, sure." Now this these monthly fees seem to come out of our transfer budget, which I'm okay with. I'm more than okay with. Because we don't really want to spend the salary because we're already over, not over the salary cap, but we're over the board, what the board wants to spend on salary. So the fact that this money is coming out of our transfer budget, I'm okay with it. Because honestly, we don't need transfers that much in MLS. But you can see now our transfer budget is down to 695000 So for 300000 basically, we got three top flight young players to come over from... Uh, Premier League, you know, we'll take that any day of the week, absolutely. So that's been the two big things with those bringing in those players and then changing our tactic to the Canada 442 that we used last year in FM 19. And what's interesting about this is that it plays differently than an FM 19. In FM 19, it was a possession kind of thing. But in FM20, it's been more of a counterattack, long ball thing, and it culminated in our 7-0 win in Atlanta United. I mean, that was like the peak of this, of this tactic. 7-0. We just crushed Atlanta United. There's another own goal. This one from Brad Guzan. I mean, I guess we can watch all these goals. Why not? We scored 7, 3 from David Akam, 3 from Dom Dwyer. And it kind of shows you one of my points that I want to get to about FM20, the beta, is that hoofball is alive and well. Like, if you've been wanting to go Route 1, now's the time. So there's Rolls, our youngster, getting the, again, off the post, off the keeper, own goal. That got us going. And then we just sort of took it to Atlanta United. Here it comes. Bomb it down to David Akam. 17 pace, 17 acceleration just goes right around. Brad Guzan for our second goal. And I know that the the way to beat Atlanta United, at least in the last two seasons, has been to give them possession of the ball, let them turn it over, and then be, hit them on the counterattack. And this just worked to perfection in, in this game. We just started booming it. And look at that. Their defense, they don't know what to do. Do they guard a comm? Do they guard Dwyer? We just started blasting it downfield left side right side doesn't matter there we got a penalty that was a penalty again Akam got behind the defense they tackled him he got the penalty then there's Dwyer with a corner so corners are working too so that's good here's another hoof ball Daniels just bombs it there's Dwyer behind the defense all alone and uh you know not some not great goalkeeping there I think there was a bit of a deflection but still 7-0 absolute destruction of Atlanta United. We beat New York City 4-0. Teams are starting to catch up a little bit. We played New York City again, only beat them 1-0. Nil-nil draw with New England. That was an important game. Um, you know, we played a lot of reserves in this game, but still, um, you know, New England figured us out a little bit. Their defense was dropping back a little bit more, not letting us get over the top quite, quite as much. Uh, then we came back, we beat Houston with a completely rotated side. We had just every bench player we could think of in there. Jonathan Scott got a couple of goals off the bench. Take a look at Jonathan Scott, the 21-year-old. He's okay. You know, He's a two-star kid. He's got some potential. But this guy scoring two goals in MLS, I don't know about that. But anyway, our, our tactic just seems to be killing people. So today we're going to take a look at Inter Miami and see how Inter Miami is looking. Um, you know, we saw that they're doing pretty good. They're in eighth place right now. They do have a problem with the suspension. Daniel Henry, their best defender, is uh, going to be out for this game. So that's good for us. They do still have Sean Johnson. Kamiri is there. Let's see. David Norman is playing. So a lot of familiar names here, but they do have a small roster. Who's Stefan Cleveland? 
on loan at North Carolina. Okay, that's fine. So they've only got, what, 21 players on the whole roster. So Miami could use some players, but they're probably at their budget. Let's see if we can take a look at their registration here. No, they still got a million dollars in salary cap, so I don't know what they're doing. They just they just can't find any players they want, I suppose. Uh, maybe we can trade for Jimmy Haig and give them a bunch of players. I don't know. Not that we have a ton of players to uh, to give them, but... Anyway, that's Inner Miami. You know, 20 players is all they've got. Only four internationals, only one designated player. So they're looks like they're doing a slow build of their roster. They're not going to, you know, jump on board fully in the first year. They're not going to throw all their money at it. They're going to save up and maybe build things a little more responsibly, or maybe that's all they could find. I don't know. Maybe their scouting network isn't in place. You know, there are people who are worried right now at Inner Miami that they don't even have a coach yet for their team and they're going to be playing next year in MLS. You know, I saw someone say there's like 61 days until MLS tra uh, preseason training camp start up. So it's like uh, you're only going to give your new coach like a month to prepare for training camp. I don't know. Maybe that's enough. But uh, there are a lot of people who are worried that it's not enough. So let's get to our game versus Inter Miami. And it'll be Battle of the Expansion Teams. Let's go. Let's see what they got. Um They should have like their jerseys and logos and stuff since they're part of MLS officially. Um You know, uh FM doesn't have to sort of guess at that or worry about licensing. As you might know in the FM community right now, there's a bit of a problem with licensing for face packs and logo packs and stuff like that. All right, here we are. We are 2-1 to one favorites. 9-2 to two against Inter Miami. They got their pink and black. It's interesting color combination. Very South Florida. Uh, you know, we're in excellent form. They're in decent form. It's our first ever meeting. Donnell Henry is suspended. Let's take a look at their head coach, Josh... Wolf, formerly USA assistant coach, assistant coach at Columbus Crew, head coach DC United 2012 and 2014, Kansas City Wizards was a player, DC United was a player. So this guy's been around American soccer for quite a bit, and he's, you know, a decent coach, um, decent judging players, decent tactical. He's an attacking style coach. He's determined. Maybe not the greatest head coach candidate. Only 12 motivating, 10 management. <clears throat> but, you know, we'll give a shot. We'll give him a shot, or at least Inter Miami will. Uh, and we're going with our best team. We rested a bunch of guys against Houston because we had kind of a packed schedule. So now we're going with our full team. Let's go. Inter Miami. All right. So we're going with a 4-4-2. We do have the rookie Ward in goal. As I mentioned before, he's been playing extremely well. You take a look at his history. 13 appearances, only 9 goals allowed, 9 shutouts. So that's pretty outstanding for a rookie goalkeeper in his first season. Then we got Romney moved over to the left to give us a little bit more you know, defensive presence at fullback. And that it's what allowed us to bring in Harwood Bellis, the loney, to go in there. Um, Walker Zimmerman is exhausted. He's played like three games in eight days. So we're giving him a rest against Inter Miami, putting in Shane O'Neill, 26 year old American. He's okay. He's decent. He's a big guy, six foot two, good jumping reach. You know, decent, just sort of generic MLS central defender. He's fine. Duncan. The youngster, 22 years old, eight appearances, one goal, two assists, 7.65 rating. He's been killing it. We've had, been having a lot of teams come in trying to trade for him, but not going to do it. Mukhtar on the left. He's our leading assist man. Nine appearances, one goal, five assists. So he's had to do a bit of adjustment moving over from attacking center mid to left wing, but he's been playing pretty well, as you can see. Doyle. The youngster, our highest rated player from, uh, is he the Man City guy or is he the, yeah, he's the, 
the Tottenham guy. Anyway, two goals, two assists, 8.83 rating and three appearances. Crushing it. Godoy taking the captain's armband, two assists on the season. Rolls, the other loney, eight appearances, two assists, 7.36 rating. Dom Dwyer up top, leading goal scorer with eight goals in 11 appearances. And David Akam, five goals in 10 appearances. So we're scoring lots of goals, and that's outstanding. So they enter Miami, meanwhile, does have Sean Johnson in goal. Powder, okay, Noah Powder. McCoon, there's Kamiri. How's he doing these days? 6.94 rating, that's okay. Dotson, Ewell, Jackson Ewell, three goals on the season from the midfield. Alex, Alexis Mendez in the midfield. Cerna on the left. Ah, Jao Plata. There we go. Top goal scorer. Four goals on the right-hand side. George Acosta, one of the many Acostas in the league. Two assists in nine appearances. And then Julian Carranza, top goal scorer with four goals. All right. Nobody's got uh, pictures except for our rookie and Mukhtar. All right. Uh, pep Talk. We're the favorites, actually, so that's a little bit strange. Let's be a service, assertive, even. We're the favorites. Go out there and take it to them. Um, I think that's it. I think we'll go to the tunnel talk. Can you talk us through your changes today? Um, we have to allow our players to rest. I mean, this is basically our starting lineup, so I don't know what you're talking about. Mukhtar appears to have been handed a role that doesn't suit him. No, he's fine. He's fine. I have the utmost confidence in his ability. Your decision to rest Walker Zimmerman, he is just being rested for sure. Here we are, Nashville Stadium. We haven't been uh, averaging quite the attendance that I want. We've only been averaging about like six to 8,000, somewhere around there. I was kind of hoping we'd be getting 10,000 sellouts like every game. I think I think that's how Nashville would come out for this team, especially in the midst of like a six game winning streak. I think they would definitely come out big for this team, especially playing at a smaller stadium. But we'll see. Uh, I did find out that they are actually going to be playing in the Tennessee Titans stadium this season, uh, this upcoming season in 2020. So they're not going to be playing at Vanderbilt. I'm not sure where I he heard that. Maybe that was one of their initial plans. I'm not sure. But what kind of tackle was that? He did the old butt scoot tackle. Rolls, is that what they teach you at Man City? And here we go. First hoof ball of the game. Dwyer behind the defense. Sean Johnson is equal to the task. Get used to that one, Mr. Johnson, because we're coming. I mean, that's what we do. A common Dwyer just break, break, breaking teams down defensively. I'm not sure... How they're doing it. I mean, they both have speed. But it just seems way more prevalent in FM20 than FM19. Like, in FM19, Route 1 barely worked at all. Like, defenses got back quite often. I felt like in, in FM19, you almost had to play a possession style or it wasn't going to work. But, at least at this level, at least in the beta... Just blasting it. Seems to work pretty good. Look at this. Acosta behind the defense. And he scores. That was not great goalkeeping there. He caught our goalkeeper wrong-footed there. And Miami goes up 1-0. Big steal from Powder. Powder seems to be playing very well at that left back. That's a couple of big steal. And then our youngster, Bellis, gets beaten. Great shot from Acosta across his body to the far post. And we're down 1-0. That's something teams haven't been able to do to us on this six-game streak, is they haven't been able to beat us at our own game of, of bombing it over the top. There's Doyle to Bellis. Uh-oh. Hang on. Hang on. We got to we gotta pause it. I got some buzzers going off. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Had a pizza in the oven. And here we go. Sean Johnson's going to get the kickoff. Looks like a mega highlight coming up for Inter-Miami. Here we go. Another long ball. This time down to Plata on the far side. Missed tackle. He cuts inside. Godoy, though, with the defense. Mm, come on, Rolls. You can get that. There we go. Oh, big turnover. Oh, saved by the post. And it didn't bounce off the goalkeeper, so that's good. 
We're a little scrambling right now defensively, and there we go. Okay, 20 minutes in. Let's see if we can get a highlight here, boys. We got Bellis playing around with the ball well over midfield. He's getting a little bit too forward. Our whole team's getting incredibly forward. Ward is like back there. He's all lonesome. And then here we go, Hoofball. Hmm. Kind of a misplayed pass there. Goes easily to Dotson. Got another mega highlights on our hand. Bellis wins it, but now he's out of position. Here comes Miami going forward. Bellis, nope, Doyle, teams up in the midfield. This is just, I mean, this is huge. This is a scrambling, just meandering highlight here. Whoever gets a goal off of this, I think, has got all the momentum. Another ball forward. Mukhtar now getting forward. He's got David a comeback post. He can't get it to him. Centers to Doyle. Doyle tries to curl it in. Cannot do it. Doyle's hit a few of those this year. He's hit a couple of long shots. Uh, he's got the skills for it. Here he is now taking the free kick. Again, almost got that one on target. Johnson forced to save it, I guess, just to be sure. It looked like it was going wide, but he made sure. And now Doyle gets the corner. Farside sends it in. O'Neal can't get a header on it, but Mukhtar saves it. We've had some huge highlights this half. You know, we're on, we're not even on extended highlights. Oh, there's Doyle slightly offside. We're not even on extended highlight, and we've had some massive highlights in this first half. Here we go, another free kick. Doyle sends it in this time. Good Doy. Great position. Oh, he was offside anyway. I guess that's why his position was so good. He was offside. Looks like they're trying to play with slightly less width. Okay, that's fine. We're getting all kinds of free kicks. Miami, come on, boys. Stay behind the line. Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> They've built a solid wall there. Doyle cannot, again, cannot curve it in. Come on. Got to get one of these on target. We're going back to FM 18 time when uh, when free kicks were useless. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Is there any sort of tactical analysis we want to do? That's not it. Analysis. Nothing. No advice. I mean, I think we just sort of keep it up. And just see if this tactic can get back on track. So let's just go to the dressing room. Give the fellas a stern talking to. Assertive. Uh, show me some desire. There we go. They're fired up. All right. Second half. Okay, it doesn't start with the second half kickoff. Interestingly. Starts 46 minutes in with Inner Miami. Booting one downfield to no avail. Ward is there easily. And we're going to start a new highlight. He rolls it out. Harwood, let's get it moving, boys. You can see our strikers are just waiting to pounce, and there's David Akam behind the defense. Can he beat Johnson? He can't on the first attempt, can't on the second attempt. Good defense by McCoon, but we recover possession. Godoy getting swarmed, dropping it back to Doyle. He gets it out wide to Rolls, the youngster, drops it to Duncan, and the highlight ends unceremoniously on the feet of Duncan. That's no good. New highlight, 55 minutes in. Big header one, but Jackson Ewell's going to gather it in. Sends it near side down to Powder, a guy who's, who's made quite a few good plays in this game. Now he's getting forward. Huge tackle from Akama, but then a turnover from Rolls. The slide tackle animation could use a little work. Um, you know, we've seen a couple of boot scooting slides. We're swarming the ball carriers, but they are just, you know, using some slick footwork to get around us. There's a terrible turnover. Akam takes it out wide. He's going to outrace the defense. He's got three players down the middle. Does he cut it back? He does not cut it back. He tries to shoot at an impossible angle. Come on. What was that? He had three players swarming the front of the net, and he didn't cut it back. Big steal there. Rolls. He's going to boot it. Guess who's down there? David Akam. This is our offense, ladies and gentlemen. And he can't score. Now that's the problem, is he gets a lot of those, a lot of breakaways, but he only finishes maybe like, you know, one, one in every five he finishes. There's O'Neal off the post. 
This could be one of those games where we just can't find the back of the net. Let's um let's concentrate. Everybody hates concentrate. I don't know why, but I've never seen concentrate work. Here we go. Out wide. Rolls. Heads it to Godoy. Gets it back after midfield. Duncan. Down the sideline. All right. Come on, boys. He's going to switch fields. Rolls. Tries to get it far side to Mukhtar. That was a terrible pass. And now enter Miami on the attack. Kamiri going to slow it down. Powder's going to try to... Yeah, he's just going to drop it back. That I was going to say. He was about to try something tricky. But best to just drop it back to the keeper, who, of course, bombs it downfield. Our defense is there, though. No problems. 65 minutes. Another mega highlight. This game has been just full of mega highlights. Dom Dwyer tries to get behind the defense. Again, not a great shot. Opposition instructions. They brought in a sub. So we will... We will definitely close him down and mark him tightly. Jao Plata, we're not marking tightly for some reason, so we will do that now. Okay, everybody else is fine. Here we go, another highlight 65 minutes in. What is happening? Highlights everywhere we turn. This time it's Inner Miami at midfield, looking to move it down. Gets it out wide to Dotson. Dotson with just an aimless cross. Straight to our keeper. And the highlight continues. <laughs> it's just, it's unimaginable how long these highlights are. Rolls. We're going to move it across field. He booms it downfield. Guess who's there? David Akam, 10 yards behind the defense. Can he score? He cannot. <laughs> uh, listen, just stick with him. He's going to get one of these. You know, he's he's got the speed, but he just doesn't have great finishing. And, you know, it just takes a few shots. 18 shots, 11 on target, no goals. 56% possession. 75 minutes here, boys. It's getting a little tight. Let's get one. All right. Another highlight. Rolls. Are you going to bomb it? Of course. Of course you're going to bomb it. Akam behind the defense. One-on-one. -on -one. Johnson stops him. Dom Dwyer's there, though. Gets the rebound. Loses it. 20 shots now. 21 shots. Here's Doyle with a corner. Far side sends it in. Can't win the header, but Bellis tracks it down. Nobody's offside. McCoon is trying to tackle him, but he can't quite do it. He's got to just chip it out of bounds, but Bellis is going to get there. He's got decent speed for a central defender. Rolls gets tackled. Miami looks to be getting stuck in here. Now they're going to try to bomb it downfield. There's... Plata behind the defense, and a big stop from Ward. He's been doing a lot of that this season. You know, he finally got scored on. I think it's like six games he hasn't been scored on in a row. But still, only allowing one goal against this kind of pressure has been pretty good. We just need to get one back. We need to score one here, boys. All right, um... O'Neal has played an outstanding game, but he's incredibly tired. We're going to bring in Jared Graves for him, which might be a tremendous mistake. David Akam, 6.3 rating right now. Um, you know, let's bring, in, let's bring in Mensa. Maybe he can get one of those long balls and maybe he can score. He's got 14, 13 finishing. Only five composure, though. No, let's cancel that. Let's cancel that. <laughs> oh, we need. We still need to make that defensive sub, I think. Yeah, he's down to 61%. He's going to fall over dead. There we go. Bring in Graves. Graves is not particularly match sharp at all. Okay, full time. I mean, sure. They got to work on these highlights. We're getting nothing but mega highlights and then game over highlights. So that was crazy. All right. 1-0 loss to enter Miami. So you can see, perhaps, how if we had slightly better finisher up top, you know, if David Akam was a slightly better finisher, we'd be scoring a billion goals. Um, so I don't know. Maybe you want to give a try to letting, you know, letting your team loose a little bit. 
if you're playing the beta. I mean, it's not like we have anything great going on. We've even got shorter passes. Like, I don't know why they're hoofing it, but they are. So, I don't know if you watch uh, Loki Doki. Go out there and get uh, Sing the Ping. And, you know, just find some defenders that like to boot it. And it might change your life in terms of football manager. It has, it has for me. I mean, just putting those two speedsters up top at striker has just changed everything. And it's been pretty fun. You know, all the goals we're scoring didn't work out that game, but it has worked out most other games. I mean, Sean Johnson is an excellent keeper, so that's probably why. But still, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this episode. I've kind of talked about everything I want to talk about. We do have U.S. Cup coming up pretty soon, but that's just we're playing Fresno. Uh, so we should be able to beat them pretty easily and move on. It looks like we are going into the second round, though. So we're keeping our position that we had when we were a lower league team. But now we're in MLS, so we're going to blast our way through these first two rounds. So maybe we don't even need to show that. And we'll come back at some point. If we make it farther in the U.S. Cup or if we you know, do something interesting in MLS, we'll come back uh, at some point. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.